Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here and today we are going to be doing the second part of what if Deku had Soul Force. I'm sorry for the long wait but I've put all of the details in the community post so you should go ahead and go over and read that to get some details on where I've been. There's nothing much else I want to say in the intro so without further ado, let's get into the video. Slick talker since a jet. One in time, all the time, ooh, yeah. Look at the way that I move, swear. Disrespectful and I'm rude, okay. I had cocaine in the school. Zuku, listen to what I'm telling you, move back, he shouts in annoyance, turning to clash with the villain. However, Deku is cloaked in his flowing soul force and he then runs ahead to face the current threat at hand. The villain throws a punch at him but he slips past it and lands a kick, then swinging across the man's stomach with a slash. This drops the villain to their knees and actually makes Tomura concerned as he has so easily dropped a villain. Next, Deku leaps off the back of Shota then slashes down another villain's body, also kicking a villain away from his teacher. This kid, Shota thinks, evading two attacks that come his way. Deku, then seeing Kuraguri in the back, runs forward with a scream and tries to subdue him but then he is sent through some portal-like thing and appears underwater. A villain tries to attack him but then Suyu takes it out as Deku swims to shore. To make it quicker, he places his sword in his inventory and gets to the yacht. As the group are stuck on the yacht and there are little options to choose from, Deku chooses to make the leap. All the way to land. Remember, he doesn't have one for all to just flick the water and launch them to land, he has to use his legs alone. Luckily, he succeeds in doing so with his friends holding him tightly and both his friends dive into the water as Deku is able to land on land. As he lands, two beings appear in front of him. One is a Nomu and another is the large black star tiger demon beast. I'll put an image up on the screen of what this beast actually looks like. It's a pretty big mystical tiger in simple terms and is a silver rank demon beast. That sounds like a low rank but in this world this demon beast will be incredibly strong. What is that thing? Deku wonders as he prepares to face it. The tiger makes a loud roar and Termura is stood right beside it. He then lets it go and Deku is forced to face it by himself. Its speed is phenomenal and it causes dents in the mud below as it charges at the hero in training. Deku tries to punch it but it simply knocks it off course as he is then slammed away into the distance. He rolls back in pain but then he takes out his soul weapon and focuses, trying to push through. In one go, he ascends into 4 star bronze rank and gets a boost to his power, making him even more motivated to continue and fight and maybe even succeed in defeating this beast. He runs ahead and ducks right under, slashing the stomach of the beast. However, he then gets slashed by its large claws and swiped away with its huge paw. He rolls back and leaves blood on the green grass as he slowly raises up, seeing he has actually dealt some damage to the bear. What even is this thing? I've never seen anything like it. If I want to beat this thing, I should use agility and speed against its brute strength, he deduces, gripping his sword tightly and preparing for conflict. The tiger charges at him again, but this time Deku evades a paw swing and slices up its arm, backing away too. He swivels his sword around and blocks a slash with the wide side of the sword, which is wedged into the ground due to the force and weight of the tiger's arm. No, Deku shouts, before being swatted backwards by the tiger. His injuries are present but the cuts are very shallow so the pain feels more like a sting and his adrenaline mostly masks it anyway. Deku ends up dealing some damage with his punches and attacks but the slashes become too much to bear. Seeing that his efforts aren't enough, he runs right back to powerfully pull his sword from the mud below. With this pulling movement, he lands a deep slash to the tiger's chest with the use of the sword's powerful inscription. Next, he ducks deeply under a slash and stabs upward, stabbing right into the heart of the tiger. Blood drips from the wound and his own arms as he does this, and the tiger falls right on its side, almost dead. He takes out the sword and stumbles back to the edge of the land, barely able to keep himself conscious and standing. That tiger would have been a challenge even if I was one star silver rank. Whoa he thinks to himself, then slowly stumbling into the water where Siyu helps him up with her frog-like abilities. His body is definitely hurt and weakened and All Might manages to take down the imposing Nomu. Deku, who eventually wakes up and gets onto his own feet after being held by Siyu, lands next to the stinking head of the tiger. He then powerfully pushes the head away but then he punctures the head and some weird energy disperses from the wound. The beast's demon spirit then enters his soul ocean and suddenly he starts to change in appearance. His growl is deep as his soul force is revealed and his muscles also increase in size. I will show you what Deku will look like and what Deku has just ingested. 
Whoa, do I have the powers of that tiger? This is crazy. If I kill those weird animals, I can maybe get even more powers, he thinks, clenching his paw-like hands. Izuku, so you ask, thinking that he may have been possessed or something. I'm fine, he states, returning to his ordinary state in his stretched shirt, releasing the muscles from him, activating his demon spirit. Now, the two weeks come for Deku to do some hard training, and with this, he starts tending his soul spirit and gaining far more power. He becomes more akin to using his sword and also finds it way easier as his strength is increased with the Black Star Tiger. His soul force has reached high at around 495 with him being on the border to reaching 5 star bronze rank. Everyone is fearful of what Deku can achieve since he's got that new tiger's abilities and he is already strong to begin with. He is also far more confident in his abilities at the upcoming tournament. The first events that change are the first race. Todoroki still challenges him, but this time it isn't due to his association with All Might. Deku has quite little association with him, but All Might just admires the powers he has and thinks he has some serious potential. He thinks of Bakugo in the same light. However, Todoroki just wants to prove to him that he isn't the strongest. This is of course quite a rather foolish belief since he definitely isn't the strongest. At the beginning of the first test, Deku just decides to use a small quantity of his soul force to stroll through the stage. The robot charges towards him, but he retrieves his sword and performs a beheading, then slices another robot right in half. Next, he runs forward with his sword and eventually ascends Todoroki in position, reaching the fall. He just starts to traverse the gaps, using graceful leaps and athletic movements to eventually reach the other end. Once he lands, he continues right on until he reaches the last stage, being the minefield. Smartly, he takes his sword and slides it across the area in front of him at high speed so the sword can use the previous explosion to push it further forwards. It does eventually slow down and ends up just getting shot upwards, but it's more than enough empty space for Deku to just speed right through. He then reaches the end of the race with a solid first place and the cavalry battle is now to come. Deku is much stronger physically now and has a few techniques that he can use to destroy his opponents. A noticeable trait of the Black Star Tiger is that it has incredible strength. Like a 5 star silver rank fighter punch the ground and cause it to break apart and crack open, just silver rank. For the cavalry race, things go a little different. People are resistant to join Deku's team since he has a million point headband but his strength is like crazy now. The thought of having to try and take the headband from Deku seems preposterous to do. However, Deku still manages to stick to his cannon team. As the cavalry race commences, Deku is able to keep his headband and keeps his strong first place position through to the very end of the battle, as many of the viewers and heroes predicted for him to do. The next part of the arc is Todoroki's declaration to Deku. Deku just takes it head on and it makes him even more motivated to see what Todoroki is capable of. Everyone knows how strong Deku is, so for Todoroki to make such a bold claim, it makes Deku quite interested. Now let's get into the first fight. Deku faces Satoshi and Ojiro still gives him advice on his opponent. However, Deku still reacts the same way and he replies to his harmful comment, freezing him. Deku just steps away from the edge, instead sees someone different in the distance, an old and wise looking man standing there with a graceful silver aura. Wake up, he whispers. Deku's eyes open and the control of his body is returned. He turns and faces Itoshi with his soul force activating. Next, he runs ahead speedily and punches Itoshi in the face with incredible force, finishing off with an elbow that literally just drops him and knocks him out. The fight is concluded and the crowd turns into uproar after this amazing knockout. Deku is quite confused at how some random person has managed to manifest themselves out of nowhere and help him. He deduces that it has something to do with his weird power, but you can't really ask anyone since he's classified as quirkless and no one knows how his power really works. Of course, no one actually thinks he's quirkless since he has incredible strength and speed, but it's very confusing to think about the origin of his powers. The next fight where changes occur will be with Deku and Todoroki. Todoroki still vows to only use his right side and Deku sees this as an easy chance to get a win. Should I use my beast power? He wonders. No, I'll test the waters with him first. He doesn't seem like a weak opponent, but I don't want to use any draining power that I don't have to use. The ice will probably be a problem though, he analyzes, releasing the soul force from within his soul ocean. Next, Deku bolts forwards at very high speed and prepares for a release of freezing ice. Deku uses his athleticism to leap over a pile of ice before spinning down with a kick that breaks through another wall of ice. 
Todoroki just continues to walk back and stop Deku from reaching him, which greatly annoys Deku. Eventually, after spending so long trying to reach Todoroki, Deku just bulldozes through the first wall of ice and uses his super speed to advance to Todoroki before he forms another wall. The attempt is successful and Deku then lands a punch to his face and launches him back with his one attack alone. He also leaves a very large bruise and heavily strains his jaw. Finally, he kicks him in his oblique area and his soul force amplifying his strength and speed intensely causes Todoroki to be launched across the squared floor. These two attacks actually weaken Todoroki a lot and once he sees Deku within a few strides length of attacking him, he can't help but to use his left side. The flames appear out of nowhere and he releases a wave of flames, also releasing a wave of ice that melts then boils into energetic water vapour. This attack launches Deku backwards and off his feet, causing him to roll away once he lands. He's using his left side now. This will be much harder, Deku thinks, preparing to use his demon spirit. As Todoroki starts to approach him, his soul force also breaks through to 5 star bronze rank, giving him another boost of strength during the fight. Also, he gains the power of his demon spirit, the Black Star Tiger. His muscles enlarge to a considerably larger size and his skin grows blue-black fur. Todoroki uses his eyes to slide towards Deku and due to the lack of friction, his speed continues to increase as he puts more and more force in. His speed eventually exceeds even 60 miles per hour as he comes in close for his finisher fire punch. Once he begins to throw the attack, Deku ducks right under it and throws his clawed paw ahead to launch Todoroki back. Right after this, he follows after him at superhuman speed, running like a quadruped. He then slams into the icy ground beneath them and shatters the majority of the ice around him to pieces, also cracking the floor beneath the ice with one hit. Todoroki, seeing this attack, pulls up a massive wall of ice in fear. Seeing that punch makes him so scared as to what the fighter could do to him. Finally, Deku punches right through the wall of ice and shatters it with another single punch, launching sparks of ice towards Todoroki. With one wave of flames, the ice shards melt but then the tiger-like fighter appears from the smoke created and swing kicks Todoroki off the ice, knocking him out and deeming Deku the winner. Way to go Deku, Uraraka shouts from the sidelines. What a brilliant performance. I wouldn't be surprised if he's the strongest fighter in our entire class or maybe the entire school, Tonya claims, taken aback by his strength. Endeavour seeing this is furious and walks away with no expression to his face, hiding his utter rage. All Might is impressed with Deku and is confused about his power since he has seen the documents referring to his quirkless self. This then encourages All Might to give a little more interrogation on his abilities. The next and final match of the tournament is between Deku and Bakugo. Bakugo can barely hide his fury back as he awaits to finally put Deku in the ground. Deku activates his soul force but actually uses his demon spirit from the beginning, knowing of Bakugo's deadly quirk. The final between the strongest, the two warriors that all of us have been waiting to be pit against one another, a brewing rivalry that tenses the air around them. May the match begin. Present Mike screams to the two fighters. Both fighters run towards one another and Deku is more than triple the speed of Bakugo. About 5 meters before Deku can attack Bakugo who releases a massive wave of powerful explosions. He then runs into the smoke and throws a palm slam at Deku's face, releasing an explosion on impact. Next he releases a barrage of explosions to keep Deku occupied and finally he throws an uppercut with a final explosion that knocks Deku through the smoke. Now his UA uniform shirt is destroyed and he uses his claws and power to rip it off. I need to break through those explosions and actually land something. This demon spirit makes me really strong so I know I can do it, he claims, running back into the fight. As he approaches Bakugo he retrieves his flat sword and blocks the first explosion with the blade. As they just keep coming, the metal starts to go orange as it becomes so hot. Finally, he strikes down with the full force of his demon spirit's body and destroys the ground that he hits, even causing Bakugo to stumble to one knee as the cracks grow beneath his feet. Finally, he comes in close and swings sideways, landing a slash to Bakugo's stomach before returning his sword to his soul ocean. This hot slash makes the wound even more painful, but since the metal had its time to cool before the slash, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Also, he didn't slash Bakugo with the really hot part of the metal. However, metal is an extremely good conductor, so the metal must have been very hot anyway. Die, Deku, Bakugo shouts with adrenaline pumping through his veins, launching the biggest explosion that he's ever released in his life. He screams as he continues to add to the explosion, and with this, he intends to finish off the battle now. 
Deku continues to slide back as he uses his sword as a shield until they are more than 20 meters apart. Bakugo, still full of rage from the previous attack, runs towards Deku with his explosion to let him run at superhuman speeds. Deku prepares himself and knows he can finish the fight now. Bakugo swings around wildly with a glowing palm, but Deku slips under and punches Bakugo in his gut so hard he flies off the ring and passes out. Deku just smiles after looking at his furry fist, and the crowd erupts as he has won the UA Sports Festival. As you can tell, with Soul Force, Deku is pretty OP. Bakugo, waking up in the recovery girl's appointment room, refuses treatment. He stands with his bandage around his bloody stomach and continues to walk back from letting recovery girl kiss him. While doing this, he also stumbles down and falls into the ground, but gets back up. Bakugo, I need to treat you. You have a ruptured small intestine. If I don't, you could feel some serious pain upon your next meal, she replies, trying to stop him from leaving. I don't need your... Before he can say help, he passes out and Recovery Girl heals him while he's on the ground. She struggles but manages to pick him up and place him on the bed after a lot of hard work. Because of Deku's performance, the amount of traction that he gets is insane. Unlike Canon, the number of hero agencies that want him are a lot. I mean, after the performance, it's quite obvious that he's the strongest of 1A. For Deku's hero name, there are a few options for him. He could be called the Black Star Tiger, but he thinks that's too intense and detached from his character. Finally, he settles on his canon name, Deku. Deku, examining his agencies, finds one special offer from somebody. The person is different and it claims that he has no sidekicks. This makes him confused that some agency so small could even be allowed to give offers for 1A students. The thing that intrigues him is what is said in the offer. Train your power. P.S. It's not a quirk, he reads, immediately making him choose that offer. Deku, going to his agency, just ends up entering some weird forest. I swear this is the location, what's going on? He wonders, turning back to leave the forest as he sees that there's pretty much nothing here. Wait. There stands a tall, slim and old man with a long white beard. He wears a red cloak and has a few rings across his fingers that glow. I will be your mentor, Izuku Midoriya, and I've seen the power that you possess, Soul Force, he states, immediately shocking the young hero in training. So that will conclude the second part of What If Deku Had Soul Force. This might be the only part of this What If for a while, and I'm intending to start a new What If from one of the suggestions in the community post that I put out. Please tell me something you liked about the video, or something that I should improve on for the next part in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.